I'm now going to add a few more details to that basic IEEE format that I explained in the last video. So we had talked about the exponent field being this 8-bit field and it obviously can represent you know numbers starting at you know all zeros and go all the way to numbers that are all ones. Now we could use the signed representation that we had talked about earlier for integers where this represents a positive number and anything starting with a 1 represents a negative number. Now if you were sorting a set of floating point numbers or if you were just trying to compare two floating point numbers that comparison becomes much easier if you assume that this represents the smallest exponent and this represents the largest exponent. So what we want to do is impart a value of minus 127 to this representation over here. As you keep increasing the binary numbers over here, it should basically go from minus 127 to minus 126, so on, go through 0, then go to 1, keep increasing until the set of all 1s represents the exponent 128. Okay, so what we want is the binary number 0 to really represent minus 127 and the binary number 255 to represent the exponent 128. Okay, so what we're going to do is whatever value I get from the exponent, I'm just going to subtract 127 from it to get the true exponent. If I really want to put an exponent value of you know 2 to the power 0, so an exponent value of 0, what I should be putting into the exponent field is the number 127, right? So basically 0 followed by 7 ones. Okay, so that's how, how I would represent the value 2 to the power 0. If I want to represent the number 2 to the power 128, I would put in all ones into my exponent field. I would read that out, subtract 127, that gives me the true exponent, which is 128. So if you look at the final representation, it's, you know, minus 1 to the power s, times 1 plus the fraction, this is just as before, but it's 2 power exponent minus the bias, which is 127 in single precision floating point values, and is as high as 1023 for double precision floating point values. Now let's look at a few more details. So you've noticed that, you know, if you're always going to add an implicit 1, right, so we said that the representation like here is 1 plus the fraction, if I'm always going to add a 1, and this is always going to be a positive number, then how do I represent the number 0, right? So for 0, you need a special case. If, if you look at the 32-bit register, and if all the bits are zeros, that's a special case. That represents the number 0 itself, right? And you would not add the implicit 1 in that case. Now, if you have a 0 in the exponent field, right, so 8 zeros, and then you have something non-zero over here in the, in the fraction field, that represents a special number referred to as a d-norm. So a d-norm is used to represent really small numbers so that you can gradually inch your way towards zero. I won't go into too many more details over here, but you know this is, this is explained in page 22 of the fifth edition textbook. So you can check it out over there. But essentially what this means is that an exponent of zero has now been ruled out for representing normalized binary numbers, right? It's a special case that is used to represent the number 0 as well as d norms. So for my usual typical numbers that I'm expressing with an equation like this, I really can't use an exponent value of 0. Similarly, if I use the largest exponent value of 255, and if my fraction is all zeros, that again represents a special number that stands for plus or minus infinity. So plus or minus depending on what the sign bit is. Now in addition to that, if I use an exponent value of 255 but my fraction field is not all zeros, that is it does have a few ones in it, then that represents another special number which is referred to as not a number. So this is the number that will show up in the register if you try to do you know, 0 divided by 0 or infinity minus infinity. Okay, so this again means that the largest exponent value, 255, is really not at my disposal if I'm trying to represent normalized binary numbers, right? So out of those 256 different values that the exponent can hold, 0 is kept for special cases, 255 is kept for special cases, and so the exponent value can only have values from 1 to 254. Okay, so this represents an ex a, a true exponent value of minus 126, right? So once I apply my bias, I can represent numbers as small as 2 to the power minus 126, and I can represent numbers as high 
as 2 to the power 127. So 2 to the power 127. And if my fraction bits are all ones, that's basically 1 plus 1. So 2 times 2 to the power 127. So this is truly the largest number that I can represent. This is the smallest normalized number I can represent. I can also represent numbers smaller than this by using D norms, which I'm not discussing right now. But this is the true range of the numbers that I can represent with single precision floating point values. So now that I've gone through all the details of the representation and given you all the factual information, let's actually work out a few examples so that this, this becomes more intuitive. So before I do that, you know, let's just talk about how to represent binary numbers, right? So let's first go through the process of how you represent an integer, right? Let's take a decimal number and convert that into binary. So let's say that I want to represent the decimal number 17 in binary. How do I do that? So I first divide 17 by 2. That gives me a quotient of 8 and a remainder of 1. That remainder of 1 becomes the least significant bit of my binary number. Then I divide 8 by 2. That gives me a new quotient of 4 and a remainder of 0. That remainder goes in over here. Now I divide this again by 2. That gives me a quotient of 2, a remainder of 0, so that goes in over here. Now I divide again by 2. That gives me a quotient of 1 and a remainder of 0 again. And now I divide by 2. I get 0 and a remainder of 1, which comes in over here. So this is the binary notation for number, for decimal number 17. Okay, so this is all done with divisions. And that's because I'm essentially dividing it by powers of 2. When I talk about digits after the decimal point, those are 2 to the power minus 1, 2 to the power minus 2, and so on. So that's equivalent to multiplying by 2. Okay, so let's go through this example here. Let's say that I'm trying to represent the number 0.75, which is a decimal number, and I'm trying to represent that in binary. Okay, so what I would do is I would first multiply it by 2. That gives me 1.5. I take this number and stick it into the first bit after the binary point. So this becomes 0 0.1 over here. Then I take this 0.5 that is left over, multiply that by 2, that gives me 1.0. Again, I take this 1 over here and stick it into the next bit. Take this aside, that's a 0. And so then from that point on, every bit is going to be 0. So this is the binary notation for 0 0.75, 0 0.75 in decimal. Right? Just to confirm, let's, let's make sure. Right. So this bit over here represents 1 times 2 to the power minus 1. This bit over here represents 1 times 2 to the power minus 2. Right? So this is 0 0.5. This is 0 0.25. That does give me 0 0.75. Let's just go through one more example. So take the decimal number 0 0.63. Its binary notation is obtained by first multiplying it by 2. That gives me 1.26. So take this aside, 0 0.1 because of this 1 coming here. Then take 0.26 aside, multiply that by 2, you get 0.52, right? So this 0 comes in over here as an next bit. Multiply this by 2, you get 1.04. So this 1 comes in here. Then you take 0 0.04, multiply that by 2, you get 0 0.08. So you get a 0 here, multiply that by 2, you get 0 0.16. So some more zeros and so on. So that would be the representation for 0.63. But this is not the normalized notation. Right, so what I need to do is shift it one place to the left. That becomes 1.01000 times 2 to the power minus 1 because I shifted it to the left. Okay, so this just basically shows you how to take a decimal number with a decimal point and convert it into a binary number with a binary point. And then you shift it right or left to bring it to the normalized form. So now let me clear out the screen and go through this example in some more detail. So I'm trying to represent the number minus 0 0.75. Okay, and let's use single precision format. Because of the minus, the very first bit is obviously going to be a 1. Okay, now let's convert it into binary, right? So we said that 0 0.75 corresponds to 0 0.11. In normalized form, this would be 1.1 times 2 to the power minus 1. This one is implicit, does not have to be represented in the register. 
the register is going to have a fraction field over here which represents everything after the binary point which is one followed by a bunch of zeros so followed by 22 zeros in this case now the exponent field has to represent minus one before I can figure out what the exponent field should contain I need to add the bias right so if I want to represent minus one I need to add 127 to it and put in 126 into this exponent field okay so that's going to be zero and then I think a whole bunch of ones and then one zero I believe right so that represents the number 126 so this would be the single precision representation for this number over here for double precision again I'll have one as my sign bit my fraction field will be 1 followed by 51 zeros and then my exponent field I want to represent minus 1 so I have to add the bias of 1023 so I have to represent the number 1022 over here and instead of doing that I'll just point you to this slide which shows you exactly what that value is okay let's go to this last example here so what decimal number is represented by the following single precision number so we're doing the exact reverse there's a 1 here so I know it's going to be a negative number this is essentially 1 times 2 to the power minus 2 and then I have to add a 1 to it the implicit 1 right so this is 1.25 and that has to be multiplied by the exponent term this value over here is I believe 129 subtract the bias from it that gives you 2 so this is 1.25 times 2 to the power 2 which is nothing but the number 5 so just to confirm yes so it is minus 5 like we said right so that one tells me it's, it's a negative number